At the outset, I express my heartfelt congratulations to initiators and movers of the founding of Nations Hope PH, a very laudatory movement which envisions the youth as the true hope of the nation. The birth of your organization is timely and relevant in the context of many political and social problems engulfing our country today. From the COVID-19 pandemic, which has wrought havoc to our economy for nearly 20 months now, the intractable drug problems, the pervasive culture of dishonesty gnawing at the moral fibers of the country and the endless degradation of the environment, destruction of the ecosystems and poisoning of lakes and the atmosphere with toxic matters. The topic you assigned me to address, encouraging the Filipino youth on the policy-making process in the local government through their local youth development councils, is dear to my heart because I started my political year as municipal mayor of Brotac Nuevo in 2016. I was then reported as the youngest, second youngest mayor in the entire country. In 2019, I was elected as the youngest congressman of the 18th Congress. As the youngest legislator in the country, I share your visions and hope for our country. It was the great Napoleon Bonaparte who said that young leaders are dealers of hope. Dr. Jose Rizal almost said the same thing when he wrote that the youth is the hope of the fatherland. My first and foremost advice to, to our youth is to get involved in the electoral process. In the coming May 9, 2022 elections, there are 18,180 elected positions, including those in Bangsamoro Autonomous Region in Muslim Pinanao, as reported by Comlec. The Comlec reported that as of June, 60 million voters have already registered for the 2022 elections. According to the United Nations Population Fund, as reported by the Daily Inquirer, dated July 6, 2021, the Philippines today has the largest generation of young people in its history. 40 million Filipinos from ages 18 to 39 will be eligible to vote in the 2022 elections. You and I belong to this group. This is a formidable number. We can dictate the result of the elections if we are united. Your movement can only be meaningful if you put in government elective positions candidate of your choice, who are known for their integrity, competence, and devotions to public service. Let us reclaim youthful leadership in government. I said reclaim because during the early U.S. colonial government and up to the Philippine Commonwealth government, which lasted, lasted from 1935 to July 6, 1946, when the Philippines regained its independence, political leaders at that time were young. President Quezon was elected governor of Tayabas, now Quezon and Aurora provinces, when he was just 27 years old. Sergio Osmeña Sr., who was Quezon's vice president during the Commonwealth government, was elected governor of Cebu at age 27. President Rojas, was gra who graduated from UP College of Law at 21, was also elected governor of Capiz at 27. He was elected congressman and speaker at age 30, Arsenio Lacson, arguably the best mayor Manila ever had, was elected at age 37. Nino Aquino, who was elected mayor at 23, vice governor at 27, governor at 31, and senator at 35. If our past politicians demonstrated youthful leadership, we can do the same. In fact, personally, I do it already. If you can mobilize the young people in the entire country to join your movement and share your visions, remarkable changes will happen in our country. I am sorry to admit that all administrations from 1951 to the present have never advanced the economic frontiers of our country. Instead of going forward, we declined. Where are we now? We're almost at the cellar, very much behind South Korea, Thailand, Malaysia, Indonesia, and even Vietnam. But this is not the end of the road. The young people are the solutions. But first, we have to make repairs in our fractured educational systems. Our universities have to produce engineers, scientists, inventors, agriculturists, doctors, nurses, business entrepreneurs, and economists whose combined expertise will move our country forward. To my simple mind, the five legs of economic progress in this fourth industrial revolution, otherwise known as the digital age, are communication or information, two, transportation, three, competent manpower, four, technology, and five, conservation of the environment and natural resources. Your visions shall broad enough to cover up foregoing areas, 
If you have any legislative initiative to advance your cause, please feel free to see me. I support your movement. Again, congratulations for the good work you are doing for your country. God bless everyone.